Pork cake? Pork cake. What are you doing with that pork? Oh, you know, just baking my cake. Eggs. A cup of sugar. The only type of dates I can get. These ones also end in pieces. Blackstrap molasses. Cinnamon, cloves, and nutmeg. It already looks like the Great Depression. This feels illegal. Finger the pork and batter. You've got the wrong man. <laughs> Add flour. Thanks. You ever see a sewage pipe burst? Bake in a moderate oven. No need to get political. Jesus. Don't tell Gordon Ramsay. Good. I need therapy. Oh boy. It tastes like a question mark. A good question mark. Bake this for someone, but don't tell them till afterward. The dump cake from 68. So post-World War II saw the invention of the cake mix, but for some Americans that was still too much work. And so the dump cake was invented. Let's take a dump. Directly into an oiled baking dish goes 20 ounces of pie filling. Goodbye, Cherry. Then we just dump cake mix on top. This is sacrilegious. Preposterous. Daft. Melt a cup of butter. Then you just dump that on too. Then you get to bake your dump. Golly gee. 375 for 50 minutes. This is for people who hate baking. And I don't like those people. We have a done dump. It's fresh. Ugh. Fresh dump. Uh. Uh. It's an unenthusiastic cobbler. I mean, yeah, it's all right, but it's all wrong. If you're going to bake, bake. A cake should be an occasion. Not a disfigured dump on a plate. Instant coffee is an instant. If it was, I'd be able to do this. Nixon. I am very awake. Leftover bread pancakes from 1947. Now I love pancakes, so a homemade recipe which is easy, needs no flour, and lets you use up some stale bread seems too good to be true. Let's see if it is. We start with seven or eight slices of stale bread. Mm. Just tear it up and put it in a bowl. Adding to it three quarters of a cup of milk. Moon juice! Time to mash! <laughs> Next, a pinch of salt. Two tablespoons of sugar! They recommend four if these are for kids. Can I be a kid, please? <laughs> Next is one teaspoon of floof powder, which is baking powder. I call it floof powder because it floofs! Finally, one egg! Beating thoroughly. <laughs> a bit of oil. Fire! Then you just... <laughs> three minutes on each side on medium-high heat. Smell really good. <laughs> mm, that, that is good. They're so fluffy. It's a good pancakes. I'm not even gonna wait for my bread to go stale. I'm just I'm just gonna make these. Magic beer bread from 84. Now most breads are risen by yeast, those lovely little things that make your bread all fluffy and puffy like a cat in heat. But this recipe is a quick bread, something which doesn't have any yeast, but promises to taste like it does. We begin with a 12 ounce can or bottle of your choice of brew. Oh, this is my type of baking. Just make sure it's not cold. Then we just add three cups of flour. Oh, it's foamy. Three tablespoons of sugar. Three teaspoons of baking powder. Sloop. And finally, a good pinch of salt. Now we just go to town with our hands. Rings are coming off. That's how you knew you were in trouble. Oh, God. Hello! Get off! And into a greased loaf pan. Uh, flatten it out. Then in this goes to a cold, unpreheated oven. Sacrilegious! Set the temperature to 350 and bake for about an hour. Is this the magic part? Do a trick! Woo! Not exactly a pretty loaf of bread. Hmm. Whoa! But it don't need to be pretty. Because that's pretty darn good. The beer offers all that lovely sour taste that you'd expect from yeast. Wow. For a dead simple, easy, cheap bread, that is a winner. Deep fried Oreos from 2001. Now is this an old recipe? Well, it depends on who you ask. But it is absurd, vulgar, and without regard for culinary decorum. It's American. Our batter begins with one cup of pancake mix. Get out of the cup. Come on. Stop being difficult. Half a cup of milk. Mood juice! Tablespoon of vegetable oil. And one egg. Whisk vigorously. Uh, is my clock dead? <laughs> It is now. Next up, we fill a pot about four inches deep with oil. Fire! Now our oil is hot, so we just dip in our Oreos. Woo! And then they go. About three minutes on each side. This is so ridiculous. Woo! Oh man. <laughs> oh, oh. These are incredible. I mean, look at that. You're insane, but I love you. I'm a changed man. Absolutely wild. 
ice cream cone cupcakes from 79. Now you'd think that ice cream cones are for ice cream, but no. Nope. This is the 70s. We do what we want. We start with a half cup of vegetable oil, a cup of sugar, teaspoon of vanilla, <clears throat> and one egg. Then you whisk vigorously. For the dry ingredients, we have a cup and a half of flour, half cup of cocoa, mm. and a teaspoon of floof soda. Baking soda. Then we alternate adding our dry ingredients with a half cup of buttermilk. If you don't have buttermilk, you could always buy it. Mix. Mix. And finally, a half cup of hot water. Ooh. Oh boy. We fill these up about two thirds of the way and they need to have a flat bottom, like me. Get it! Whoa. 350 for about 30 minutes. Hello! For the buttercream, we just beat a half cup of soft butter, slowly adding a cup of powdered sugar, and some vanilla. Yes, you can make buttercream by hand. I do everything by hand. I'm very lonely. Ooh. Hmm. Look at that. Mm -hmm. It's just a really tasty, fun idea. I love it. Ambrosia from 1951. So mid-century America has produced many suspect salads, many of which continue to leak out of the angsty states of Wisconsin and Minnesota. However, Ambrosia is arguably the one that started them all, the pioneer, if you will, and today we're gonna see if that's a good thing. Start by draining a pound and a half of mandarin oranges, a pound of maraschino cherries, and 20 ounces of pineapple. Time for a cup and a third of cream whipped. Keep in mind, this is a salad. <laughs> Yes! I like to whip cream by hand. It's a lot more intimate. Now in goes a half cup of sour cream. And a half cup of coconut. <laughs> Chop the cherries and a cup of walnuts. Sure. Walnuts aren't my favorite, but I've been known to never turn down a nut. Mm. In goes the cherries. Pineapple. Mix. Just like me, the mandarin oranges are a delicate fruit, so they go in last. You know, this actually looks pretty good. <laughs> to the fridge! Once you're ready to serve, you fold in two cups of marshmallows. <laughs> to the salad! This has to be the most 50s thing ever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what? I like this one. It's quite pleasant. Cowboy cookies from 65. Now I'm familiar with cookies and I'm quite familiar with cowboys. I went to the University of Wyoming. Go Pokes! So let's bake their cookies. We start by toasting a cup of coconut, a cup of pecans, and two cups of rolled oats. What? I've never thought to toast oats. Eight minutes at 350. Next we have a cup of butter, a cup of brown sugar, and a cup of sugar. Sugar. This recipe is so even. How nice. Cream. Vanilla. <laughs> and two eggies. Mixy mix. Oh, toasty. For the dry ingredients, we have two cups of flour and a mere teaspoon of baking soda. Fold. In goes all of the toasties. <laughs> Plus two cups of chalky chips. <laughs> So much stuff! Cause the Western folks all know. About 11 minutes at 3.50. <laughs> These are highfalutin. Mm. Hold on. Good? Very. A poor man's cake from the Great Depression. The Depression was bad, right? People were crawling around on all fours in their yards eating dandelions. No, that's not an exaggeration. Those who were better off, like Ruth here, came up with recipes like this. Though bless her heart, she couldn't spell raisins. That's okay, Ruth. We start by cooking one cup of said raisins with two cups of water. Fire! We're boiling this until it reduces by half. Mm. Then we beat in a whole cup of shortening. I mean, I think that's a little excessive. This, this, mm. In goes one egg. Plus a teaspoon each of ground cloves, allspice, and simonium. Ruth, I don't think that's gonna help. Finally, we add one teaspoon of baking soda and two cups of flour. Get him! Oh, this does, this does not look right. There are no baking instructions at all, so we're just gonna do 350 for Lord knows how long. About 45 minutes. Did you notice there was no sugar? My legs are shaking, and not in the good way. Mm. Mm. Well, that tastes like a diagnosis that is severe. Magic peanut butter cookies from 84. These are three ingredient cookies, which means I have some serious doubts. Because a normal cookie contains butter, milk, salt, baking powder, flour. This recipe just says no. We start with one cup of peanut butter, mm. a half cup of sugar, plus one egg, and that's it. <laughs> this is not how you make cookies. Just roll them out, then cross them with a fork. There's no way. This is gonna end up a melted tray of peanut butter. 350 for 10 minutes. No. Come on. How? You cheated. <laughs> These are brilliant. Melt in your mouth, brilliant. <laughs> Here I was thinking I knew how baking worked. It's not fair. 
Copycat Almond Joys from 1953. Yes, copycat recipes are nothing new, and neither are Almond Joys. In fact, one Mrs. Kirk from Montgomery, Alabama loved them so much, she wanted to make them herself. Let's go, honey. We start with an entire 14 ounce can of sweetened condensed milk. Mm -hmm. To which we add two cups of powdered sugar. Uh, mix. Then comes four cups of unsweetened coconut. That, that's a lot. Come on! Then press it into a large parchment-lined pan. I'm using a 13 by 9 inch, but you could use anything similar, like a casserole dish. <laughs> Once everything's flat and even, you're gonna need some almonds. You just line them up and press them in. <laughs> This is so satisfying. Now this goes to the fridge, preferably overnight. It just needs to be really hard. Ooh, cut! Woo. Yes! Now four cups of chocolate and two teaspoons of shortening or coconut oil. Melting over a double boiler. Fire! Then dip and cover. Hello! Done! Let them set. <laughs> mm -hmm. On the money! Mm, look at that! We did that! Mrs. Kirk, you're my hero. Coconut ice from 61. Now it's come to my attention that a lot of Americans don't like coconut, and you know what? It's okay to be wrong. But this here is an old school British candy which looks too simple to be good. We begin with a 15 ounce can of sweetened condensed milk. Half of it goes in one bowl, the other half in another. Then into each bowl goes a cup of powdered sugar. My sweet tooth is tingling. Mix. Then we dye one bowl pink by using a few drops of red food coloring. Boop. You know, as a kid, I've always loved pink, which was the first of many signs. And a little bit of nilla. Finally, to each bowl goes two cups of coconut flakes. Don't use sweetened. <laughs> you will kill somebody. One, two. Then to an eight inch parchment lined pan goes the first layer. <clears throat> Gotta pack it tight. Then the second. <clears throat> this is fun. And that's it. Pop it in the fridge for at least three hours to set. <clears throat> Ooh. <clears throat> oh my goodness. Mm, these are just lovely. What do you think? There's no ice in these. <laughs> The perfect summer candy. Ginger nuts from 1906. Now I've never seen a ginger nut, but I assume it's roughly the same as a blonde or a brunette. Fittingly, these nuts begin with a good pound of flour, pinch of salt, three ounces of sugar, teaspoon of soda, and half an ounce of ginger. Whoa, you're gonna be spicy. Now to a saucepan, we add four ounces of butter, plus half a pound of any treacle. I would call that excessive. Fire! Once the butter is melted, we add half a gill of milk. What is a gill? <coughs> a gill is 32 fluid drams. Well, thank God for that. When has the avoir du bois system helped anybody? We need a quarter cup. No juice! In we go! Mix. We knead in flour until stiff. Come on! <laughs> Roll to balls. And what are balls without nuts? Bake in a quick oven for about seven minutes. That'll be 400 degrees. Hello! Okay, I see you. It is a snapless, rotund ginger snap. It's like what ginger beer is to ginger ale, just in cookie form. Good cookie. Macaroni biscuits from World War II. So during the turn of the 40s, there was this strange trend of people putting disturbing ingredients into dinner biscuits. Whether it was the product of wartime rations, personal taste, or consanguineous marriage remains a mystery. First step is to cook a half cup of macaroni. Fire! <laughs> Meanwhile, our dry ingredients are two cups of flour, quarter cup of sugar, teaspoon of salt, plus five teaspoons of baking powder. God damn. This is a Josh Groban treatment. You can fire these from a mortar. Don't got me making ballistic biscuits. Strain! Wet ingredients are three tablespoons of melted shortening, a cup of moon juice, one egg, and the macaroni. Combine the two. Mix. Boop. We got the muffin biscuits. Half hour at 400. Oh, boy. Woo. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, there's something wrong here. There seems to be macaroni in my biscuit. <laughs> it's precisely what you think it would be. It feels like brains. Cornstarch cookies from 1919. These go by many names, like starchies, meltaways, and in Brazil where they originate, sequilus. But they're one of the OG gluten-free three ingredient cookies. We start with a half cup of sweetened condensed milk. Followed by a half cup of soft butter. Beat vigorously. <laughs> then using the handle of a spoon, we slowly stir in two cups of cornstarch. What precisely does this accomplish? Trust the process. Hmm. This is a strange trifecta of ingredients. I'm intrigued. Now we bake in a slow oven for 15 to 20 minutes. We'll do 325 Fahrenheit. Perfect. These are so cute. Well. You know, in a world of similar cookies, these are something quite special. They're like a cloud of joy. Incredibly unique. Hmm.
peanut butter soup from 1941. So this cookbook was put out by the Metropolitan Life Insurance Company to make sure people were getting adequate nutrition during the war. And the soup here is apparently the perfect meal when it comes to ideal macronutrient intake. We've come a long way in 80 years. Into a saucepan, we start by melting five tablespoons of lard. You know, in the story of my life, lard is the closest thing I've ever had to an nemesis. Fire! Once the lard is melted, we make a roux by whisking in five tablespoons of flour. <laughs> now that we've got some color, we mix in a 12 ounce can of evaporated milk. Diluting it with the same amount of water. Mm. Finally, we have a pinch of salt and just a half cup of peanut butter. Get in! Oh, it is, this is thick. Today, we're serving up hot beige. Come get your bowl of brown. Give me that. I don't understand. This dish has no idea what it's trying to be. It is confused. It isn't terrible. It's just an unfortunate way to consume peanut butter. Ice cream coleslaw from 1973. Now, I don't precisely know the nature of the dystopian demons that must have been inhabiting the minds of the people of the 1970s, but they must have been severe enough as to cause this abomination. We begin with three cups of shredded cabbage. You know, cabbage is one of those things... I have nothing else to add. Next is eight ounces of whipped topping. That's one way to spice things up. Ooh, we don't shame anybody here. Now, 20 ounces of crushed pineapple. Did I mention this was in the kids' recipe section? Yeah. Mm. This is why we hate cabbage! Very bad. Finally, we have a pinch of salt and two tablespoons of white vinegar. You, ma'am, are motivated by anger and anger alone. Now I let this chill for about two hours or enough time to sell your possessions and flee the state. Mm. I feel like I'm waiting to be hanged. All right. It tastes like how a dentist office smells. Broken dreams and scattered screams. I, that's the product of an ill mind. Be